Hi there everyone, welcome back to Objectivity. We have another special guest for you today. This is Professor Mike Merrifield. He's an astronomer. You may recognise him from some of my other projects like 60 Symbols and Deep Sky videos. But today, he's here with us here at the Royal Society talking about these incredible astronomy documents. And today we're going to be talking about a very famous name in astronomy, and that's the name Herschel. Who's this, Keith? This is William Herschel, so he's probably best known of the family. He had a sister called Caroline, another great astronomer, and his son John Herschel, but William is best known for discovering Uranus. Now, Professor, I'm guessing the name Herschel is not new to you. I've come across him once or twice before, although interestingly, in my line of work, his planetary discoveries are not the thing that he's best mm. known for. Let's have a look in the top corner, because this is a nice little detail. What's going on up here? You can see the orbit of the planet Saturn there, and just beyond it, a planet which here is called Herschel. Here it's got his name on it. That's right, yeah, yeah. So it was eventually named Uranus by a German astronomer, so Germans do have a sense of humour. OK. Well, before we get to these papers, let's, hmm. let's look at the rough stuff here. So these are sweet books kept by William and Caroline Herschel. So they're looking at sections of the sky with their telescope and just recording what they see night by night. This was February, so it's going to be blooming cold out there mm. when they're doing this stuff. It was literally freezing. Caroline Herschel's skirts froze to the ground as she was using a telescope. You can see that what they're observing, apart from stars, is, is milky nebulosity. You won't find them referred to as galaxies. I mean, they're all referred to as nebulae, because all he, all he could really tell was that they were these faint, fuzzy objects. And the, what they actually were wasn't really resolved until the 20th century. After his sweep books, he wrote two papers that are really interesting, and we've got both of them here. And we see in both of these papers, Professor, that Herschel's becoming a little bit obsessed by the construction of the heavens. He really wants to figure out what's going on, doesn't he? What catches your eye in here, Keith? So he says, the telescope I have lately completed is of the Newtonian form. So he has a brand new telescope and he's telling the Royal Society the kinds of things he can see. So he's beginning to look at nebulae and beginning to resolve them. On applying the telescope to part of the Via Lactea, What's that? Is that Latin? So, is that yeah, Via Road Lactea Milk. So it's the Milky Way. I found that it completely resolved the whole whitish appearance into small stars. That's why he can start now doing some science, because actually before, when you just saw this diffuse glow, there wasn't a lot you could do with it. But now he can actually start doing things like seeing where the stars are, counting them, seeing if there's more in one place than another, to try and figure out the actual structure of the Milky Way. We could spend a long time going through this. I happily would. Maybe, maybe <laughs> we'll sit you down in a room later on and you well, can... Uh... We like pretty pictures best, don't we, Brady? Yeah, let's get to the pictures. We see it's signed off at the end there. William Herschel, April 1784. Look at this. Keith, I know this is one of your favourite pictures in all the Royal Society, isn't it? It's one of them. So you've got a big circle around. This is the kind of core of, of stars you can see from a central point. But he's trying to impose some ideas about how one might observe. I think it's intended as a, it's not intended as a, a detailed reproduction of what's out there. It's a kind of cartoon view to kind of aid thinking. Right? And he's trying to figure out what I think, why it is you see these stars in certain directions on the sky. Where the S is, is us. Right, which means that in any direction you look, you'll see more stars, say, this way than you do in if you were looking this way. And so actually any direction you look in the plane of that slab, which is kind of this ring around the sky, you'll see the Milky Way, which is exactly what we see when you see the Milky Way as kind of a band across the sky. He was right and he was wrong, because of course, yes, indeed, it, 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 he has that kind of, that, that view of the fact that it's a, a highly flattened structure, which is why you see many more stars in some directions than, than others. But of course, it's not actually a rectangular slab, as he showed it here. The view splits in two here, and it looks like he's speculating, why would we see two bars of stars in the sky? And he's saying, maybe the slab splits in two. Yep. Whereas actually what this really touches on is something that comes up in a lot of his work that he, he was completely unaware of, which is that actually there's obscuration in some directions in the Milky Way. And in particular, there's a thick lane of dust really in the plane of the Milky Way, which is why when you look in some directions, you see very few stars actually directly in the plane, because you're really looking right into that very thin, intense plane of dust. Whereas when you look above it or below it, you start seeing stars again. So anyway, this is 1784. Yep, so this is a first kind of projection of what Herschel's thinking. Right. And then he develops that into to a more, what we'd consider, consider to be a proper map after that. Okay, and he, he goes in hard on this next paper. Mm. This is a year later now, this is 1785. He's had some new thoughts, he's done more observations presumably. What's he saying now? So this one is called On the Construction of the Heavens, which is a fine title. So the subject of the construction of the heavens on which I have so lately ventured to deliver my thoughts to the society is of so extensive and important a nature that we cannot exert 
too much attention in our endeavour to throw all possible light upon it. I shall therefore now attempt to pursue the delineation of which a faint outline was begun in my former paper. He's saying we need to understand our place in the galaxy, in the universe, isn't he? Absolutely. You know, it really is, you know, it's mapping the heavens. For an astronomer, it's the most fundamental thing you can do. I mean, we can't possibly go into all of it, but there's some really interesting things in here. There's also, as you can see, lots of measurements. You're going to read this later, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah, I can tell. I'll take it home with me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's going to be allowed. Again, signed off with his name. January the 1st. January 1st, wow. New Year's Day, and he's yep. writing papers. Absolutely. First day of 1785. The figure we're really interested in, and you're quite familiar with this one, aren't you, Professor? This is a very famous picture. In fact, I reproduced it in a book I wrote some years ago. So, uh, yes, it's a very, very famous picture of kind of the payoff from all this effort of measuring the numbers of stars in all sorts of directions is actually a map of the Milky Way. It's one of the great images in science, Absolutely. really, isn't it? Yeah. So this is the actual one. This is the yep. drawn with the ink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm right next to it. Yep. Oh, I should be more careful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's remarkable. What's it like seeing the actual drawing? It is amazing. It truly is. How much would this be worth, Keith? Well, I think we can say the value is astronomical. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so that's you in the middle, the big bright star in the middle. There. Yeah. That's where we are. You are here. You are here. I mean, it's right and it's wrong, right? It's right in that he set out to do a very good piece of science of actually using that technique to figure out what the three-dimensional structure was. And he faithfully reproduced a map based on his analysis. And it's wrong comes back again to this issue of the obscuration that he was unaware of. We're not actually at the center of the Milky Way, we're out in the suburbs. Um, but he does, of course, correctly identify the fact that the Milky Way is a flattened system. So you can see something of the structure of the Milky Way, but a lot of it is lost because of this effect that he was unaware of. I love this. Yep. I love this. But do you know what? We've got even more stuff to show you. We've got too much stuff for this video. Me too. We, we got a bit carried away, didn't we? <laughs> so let's show you a few other things. All right, Professor, so what we've got now is we've got William Herschel's son, John, who continued the family tradition. Yeah, so he was checking and extending William's work in the Northern Hemisphere and then off to South Africa to look at Southern stars. So these are some of the original illustrations that went into the philosophical transactions of John's drawings of the nebulae that he could see. They're really nice hand-done things. I think they've got their names on the back. I can test the professor here and see if he recognises any of these. We've got this one first. So this is a negative image, which means that light patch around the middle there is quite deep obscuration. So it looks very like the Black Eye Galaxy. But you're correct. It is the Black Eye Galaxy. It is. Is yeah. it? it mess you looked. You I looked. did not. I is did that not. Messier 64 or? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, at all. I'll stop now. No, at <laughs> Get all. Get out while I'm ahead. What's been drawn by John Herschel this time? So I think it's a planetary nebula. Mm -hmm. I have no clue which one it is, but it does have that kind of planetary nebula feel about it. Nebula it's in... the dumbbell, isn't it? It is yeah. the dumbbell. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the dumbbell. Okay. Okay. Well, that's one we know. It is. Mm. Yeah. Dumbbell nebula. We can show people what that looks like now. Well, it looked like it then as well, but <laughs> we know what it looks like <laughs> better probably, now. It's probably grown a bit since it, then, actually. It probably yeah. has grown. Well expanded. And we've just got more general pictures like this. These are pencil drawings, and when you, when you think of an astronomer at this period operating really at the limits of what the human eye can see at night time, and then having to render it in quite correct, a, a negative image using very, very fine pencil, it's really an artistic feat as well as a scientific one. And it must be a real balancing act too, because while you're working, you've got to stay dark adapted. So the last thing you want is any light, because actually that will destroy your night vision. Either you have to then remember it long enough to sketch it in the light, or you have to be doing your sketching pretty much in, mm. the, in pitch blackness. Look at this, we've got whole packets of these. Look at that, it's got, see the, it's got the seal. I get so excited by sealing wax, m much yeah. more than I should. <laughs> these are lovely, look at these like little, little collector cards except these are like handmade by one of the most famous astronomers ever. They're just all these little smudges and blobs which turned out to be all sorts of things, very often galaxies. M94, Messier Object 94. That's what M94 looked like to Herschel, and this is what M94 looks like now with more advanced telescopes. We've got one more thing to show you, and this is a complete curveball. It's something that's just come into the Royal Society recently, which is very exciting. It relates to Herschel, mm -hmm. We don't know what it is yet. This is one where every, all you people at home, maybe you're going to be the ones to crack the puzzle. Keith, do you want to do the honours? Let's get the object. This is amazing. 
So what have mm -hmm. we got here, Keith? This is a little medal. You can see it's in its original box, which looks 19th century to me. It was very kindly donated to the Royal Society. And the story is that the gentleman who donated it, when he was a, a very young boy, did some odd jobs and gardening work for a descendant of the Herschels, the right. Reverend John Herschel. And eventually, as a reward, he was given this little medal. I'd start mowing lawns if I got <laughs> stuff like this. It's possibly even some kind of teaching aid. So if I take it out of here, we can maybe get a better look. It's not a, a precious metal, it's a base metal. And oh, the back's even better. Yeah, so you can see it's quite decorative. Signs of the zodiac around yeah. the outside mm -hmm. there. That's right. The other side is, is a bit more fine and it's slightly harder to see. Is it just worn on that side? I wonder if it, it was... It is and it's just, I don't know if it's been badly polished or, or quite what's happened there, but you can probably just see it's a, it's a little model of the solar system. There's a line coming in, whizzing around the mm. sun and going back out again. So these are the orbits of comets. Mm. And I think one of the planets you can still see on there is Saturn, complete with its rings. It would be nice just to nail down when it dates from what the formal Herschel Association is with this thing and what it was for. All right, Professor, there you go. That's your first time here in the Royal Society Archives. Have we delivered the goods? Oh, absolutely. You know, I'll be back. Right. We'll see. Uh. <laughs> I think that says something about a new discovery on the moon. That's right, yes. And Sir John Herschel, the most famous astronomer of the day, turned his large telescope to the moon. And of course, this is what he saw. Flying moon men, little sylvan glades there, structures, what looks like beavers in the corner here. Um, yeah, moon beavers. 